Hi, Stats fans. Ian Fellows here, and I am here to talk to you about a new statistical user interface that we are in the beginning stages of development of called Vivid. And this is a collaboration between myself, uh, Shu Hao Wu, and, and Mark Hancock. And I don't normally announce projects that are more in their infancy like this one is, but I was inspired by a talk that David Robinson gave at our studio comp this year. And he talked about the importance of getting your work out there as quickly as possible so that it can be useful to people and also so that you can get uh, collaborators and different ideas uh, flowing into the mix. So that's what I am doing today. So some of you may know me from my work on Deducer, which is a, a, a graphical user interface for R, and that has really been uh, quite a good but qualified success story. The manual for that has had over 1.2 million page views over the course of its operation over 150,000 downloads from a single CRAN mirror. So it's fairly popular. It has um, been released for about 11 years. And during that time, it had 10 plus add-on packages developed for it. So it's a vibrant ecosystem, but it is uh, one that is a bit dated uh, at 11 years old. And it has been apparent for some time that uh, really it's, a good time to start to rethink everything about how we interact with statistical user interfaces in general as well. And, you know, just to provide a little background for folks who uses statistical user interfaces, this is not just uh, for toy people. You know, at every level of, of sophistication, people are using interfaces for statistics. Students use interfaces, business analysts in the world use interfaces, statisticians use interfaces to analyze standard methodologies, data scientists use interfaces. And they use all kinds of different interfaces from Minitab to R Commander, Deducer, Excel, Tableau, SPSS, Data, Neem, and Data Robot. All of these are user interfaces that people utilize to both increase their efficiency and increase the breadth of what the, the statistical techniques that they have access to with their skill levels. And when I'm really thinking about what do we want to do, um, and we really want to please all of those levels of sophistication, which can be a bit of a challenge, but it is a challenge that is approachable. And uh, here are some principles about what we want to do in order to, to make that happen. We want a user interface that has broad coverage so that you don't have to leave the user interface or get stuck where you can't do things in the user interfaces. Um, and we also want that broad coverage to be extensible because different subpopulations may have different workflows that um, they, they, they need um, you know, special. So for instance, a student might need a user interface to really illustrate the central limit theorem, whereas a statistician would not need that because we all know the central limit theorem. Uh, we also want rich interactivity, beautiful interactive uh, or beautiful tables with interactive visualizations. These are important things for, for a modern user interface. From a statistical standpoint, we do want reproducibility. And I think that that's really the big takeaway that in programming, our markdown has really shown the value um, of an easy to use reproducible environment that mixes code and output into a single document. And I think that that's a really important um, touchstone to, to work to. And also inspectability is very important to me. The idea that not only can you reproduce your analysis, but that that analysis is inspectable, that you can look at the code that's generated that, you can drill down and understand the algorithm and its implementation. For students, you want a transferable skill set. You want to learn a graphical user interface that's not going to leave you in a sandbox that you can't get out of. You want a skill set that uh, both is useful outside of your current environment as a student, for, set, for instance, and you also want it to uh, work with you so that as you gain in sophistication, the skills that you learn in the user interface transfer to a more sophisticated workflow. And you want this working environment to be um, unified. And that means that people of all different sophistication levels are using the same environment in order to do their analyses. So from the most sophisticated machine learning researcher all the way down to a student, all the same um, environment. And what that does is it allows for collaboration. It's also important that we do uh, something web-based. 
And that may not be immediately obvious about why that is, but it uh, simplifies collaboration because you can have unified environments for your data analysis that everyone has identical access to. And also installation across large groups with heterogeneous software hardware environments is, is really important, especially in the student environment where you may have 2,000 students coming into your new stats, um, stats program and everybody needs to, to, to have it running on their system and they may have some very weird setups. The software also should be accessible outside of your environment. And what I mean by that is that, that if a piece of software costs too much for you, as you move in from, let's say a student to a uh, business, you don't, the skills that you learned aren't much good because you can't actually obtain the software to uh, make that work. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a break from this and just show you how, um, give you a sort of a brief overview of what we're doing. So I really wanna do, I think that it's important that things be built into where people are and the, the primary place that people work is in our studio. So this Vivid is deeply embedded in our studio and uh, we can go ahead and just uh, ins just install it and and we'll go ahead and load it up. Okay, so here we see that Vivid lives just like any other pane in your R Studio browser. Um, it is a um, uh, a pane here, and we see that it's a it's a document uh, format, and um, basically. The idea here is that you've got a couple different menus, uh, things to manage your session, insert code, um, uh, things for data manipulation, data analysis, and visualization. Now, none of this stuff is built out yet. This is, at the, again, in the beginning stages of, of development. What we've built now is the framework for making this thing work. So uh, what do I mean by a document that mixes um, mixes code and, and, and output? Um, well, here we can just load data a simple dialogue for loading data from a package. Okay, so we click that, load data in a package. We're gonna load in our favorite data set, which of course is empty cars. Um, there's a close tie between that and Iris, of course. Um, and we see we hit run, and here we have empty cars loaded into our environment. And we can see that the, the user interface elements are interleaved with the code that's generating the output. So there's a, there's a full layer of transparency from the user interface down into the, um, the results that are coming out. And this is all in our R environment. So we can go ahead and check a look at our environment. And yeah, we see empty cars is in our environment. But critically, empty cars is in our environment, but we haven't blocked the server here. So while this is running over here, um, uh, we have not uh, blocked our console. So we can still do stuff and do manipulations on empty cars if we wanted to uh, in the console, and that would, not, uh, that would not affect anything. Okay, so this is a document format too. So even the user interface elements are a document format. So we can save this document. We can save it with the workspace. And we'll save it as demo, okay. Okay, now let's say that we've come back to this analysis uh, much later, we can go ahead and load that document back up and it will load all of the user interface elements along with the output and the things that were in the environment since we saved it with the environment. We can see here we've got everything just as it was uh, when we saved it. And this allows for reproducible uh, analysis that uh, you can get to later and, and, and contains all of the controls and, and things that we're interested in. Okay, so uh, let's see something a little more fancy than loading something in. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a visualization. And here we're gonna do a 3D plot here. So we've got X, uh, our Y, we're gonna choose to be displacement, and our Z, we're going to choose to be QSEC. Go ahead and run this. and our 3D plot pops up here. Now, the great thing about this is this is an HTML widget, uh, which has rich JavaScript, and we can rotate this and inspect this visualization um, 
inter, inter, in an interactive manner. And we can save that and load it as well. So um, here, what we're seeing is that we get some, some richness, we get uh, dy dynamism, and we get reproducibility. Um, and we can also go ahead and take this and convert this to a markdown document as well. So see all of the all of the code that was run in here now gets converted to a markdown document. So anything that you do in your in your in your vivid document can be converted into a markdown document. Okay, so um, you know, vivid the rich document format. It's deeply integrated with R Studio because that's where our most sophisticated users are living. And it mixes interface elements, output, and code. It's dynamic, easy to use, literate, reproducible, um, and it's in its infancy. But so broad coverage is not there yet. It's very simple to extend, um, and I'll show you that in a second. It's got rich interactivity, it's reproducible, and it provides a transferable skill set. Students learn in our studio, and as they get more sophisticated and start writing code, they're in the same environment. Um, so that's a unified working environment. It's web-based, so you can use it in RStudio server or on your local desktop RStudio. And because it's free and open source, it's going to be available everywhere. Okay, yeah, so I, I, I skipped over that, but um, let's go ahead and see a 3D scatter plot, what the actual code there looks like. Well, this is all just shiny. This is just a shiny applications. So here we have um, uh, a user in a, a UI and a server. And it's very similar. We've got an element for a data input, a variable input, variable input, variable input for X, Y, and Z. And then some initialization so that we make sure that we can load this from file. Um, and then a little bit of code that just says what markdown code we're generating. And then a little bit of code that, that takes the current state of the UI and we can save it to a file. And that's basically it. It's, so it's less than 60 lines of code uh, beginning to end to uh, create um, a, a new user interface for uh, doing 3D plots. So very simple, uh, very easy to use. And it's speaking the same language that all statisticians know. So, so statisticians know Shiny, they can make Shiny apps. Well, then they can make Vivid plugins just as easily or adapt their current Shiny applications for, for use in Vivid. Uh, I should also know that we can operate these things also as um, uh, every uh, uh, gizmo, uh, every uh, menu item that we create uh, can also be um, implement is also uh, shown to the user as a as a um, as a shiny add-on. So you can as a shiny gadget. So you can go ahead if you don't want to go into the full um, you know viewer thing. You can just bring up a dialog with one specific gizmo that you want to you want to do, and that um, allows you to to you know be a little bit less um uh forceful on the user to you know utilize the whole document th interface but if they just want to they're working in the console and they just want to say oh hey i want to do a linear model let's check this out um they can do that without you know without utilizing the full um sort of power of the of the document format um so that is uh basically it um i wanted to show you this i'm you know we're really excited about it and i think that it's going to um be a really useful thing for all levels of sophistication. I'm interested in, you know, having um, uh, talks with people about collaborating on this. Uh, so if you think that this is interesting and something that, you know, you're interested in, um, in, in working on, yeah, hit me up and we will, uh, we'll start working on it. There's an open source repository um, on GitHub that I will link to in the description. So thanks very much, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how this progresses and hearing your comments.